here at Fairchild, we have a great legacy of exploration. And of course, plants are the thing that make it possible for people to live on Earth. They make all life possible on Earth. And right now, in the world of exploration, or in the universe of exploration, there are people looking at moving beyond Earth and exploring back to the moon and going to Mars. And if any of those people want to go out and live away from Earth for any amount of time, they're going to have to find a way to bring plants with them to provide food and oxygen. And those are the things that are essential for long-term survival. This is our program that we're doing at Fairchild Garden and in the community that we call Growing Beyond Earth. It's our partnership with the scientists at NASA Kennedy Space Center, trying to find ways to grow plants aboard spacecraft so that when explorers start making those leaps away from low Earth orbit, they can have a source of food. This box here is built to be a replica of the container for growing plants on the International Space Station. So what we can do here at Fairchild is we can test all kinds of different plants to see how they might perform once they go up into space. We've tested over 150 different kinds of edible plants just to find the ones that'll be perfect for astronauts to eat in space. The plant we're growing here today is a variety called extra dwarf bok choy. This has been a real superstar. We've had this grown in hundreds of schools in Miami-Dade in equipment just like this with middle schools and high schools, uh, students collecting all the data and telling us how these plants grow. What we found is that this extra dwarf bok choy grows well, it's very dense, stays small, has great flavor. It had this wonderful journey through the schools of South Florida and beyond, and recently it was launched also to the International Space Station. So what a journey this plant has had. When you see the way we grow these plants here on Earth and the way they're grown on the International Space Station, you tend to see this purplish pink light. And that's because we're using a combination of red and blue light. Plants absorb light and make energy in the red and blue part of the light spectrum. Plants don't use green light at all to make energy. So that's why we just cut that out of the mix altogether. We call it the light recipe, and we've removed green from the recipe altogether. That's why the plants have this, this funny color. Now, when you look at plants in the sunlight, they look green to our eyes because they're not absorbing that green light, they're reflecting it. So everything we see is all the light they're not using, and that's why plants look green.